What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Five O'Clock Hustle Podcast. This is episode 11. Now, if you're anything like me and you have 100 ideas a minute and you don't know where to start, well, you're going to love this episode, especially if you're interested in the consumer product space. This week, we had Matt Rizek in the garage, and he's freaking awesome. When he's not using his free time mentoring students and aspiring entrepreneurs, he's the COO of the SoCal-based company Idea House & Co. It's a one-stop shop for bringing your product ideas to life, and they can help you with anything from research, design, engineering, marketing, branding, supply chain design. They can even help you manufacture your product. Product. Now, if you're looking to launch a business with your awesome ideas and you need help getting off the ground, hit up Idea House & Co. and they'll definitely be able to help you out. But before you do that, listen to this episode and make sure you grab a pen and paper too because you're going to need it. Uh, Matt comes out with an endless well of practical advice and he goes through the step-by-step -step process of making your ideas a reality. All in all, he's a super smart guy with tons of experience, and it was a lot of fun talking with him. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as we did, and if so, please, please, please leave us a review on iTunes and sign up for a weekly newsletter at 5oClockHustle.com. All right, let's start this thing up. Keep hustling, everybody, and Dre, start the show. 5 o'clock hustle. <laughs> 5 o'clock hustle, bro. 5 o'clock, 5 to 8, 5 to 12, 5 to 3 until you get back up the next morning, man. Week, I got a new idea. And that's what it always is, right? It's crazy. Five o'clock. I was doing that in 2005, but everybody thought it was weird. Five o'clock. Thus, the side hustle was crazy. Five o'clock hustle podcast. Man, they're having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, cool. Just for everyone listening, we have Matt Rizek from Idea House and Co. Uh, welcome. We are, yeah, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. For Thank sure. Welcome. So um, you want to explain a little bit about, well, first of all, how'd you hear about the five o'clock hustle? I think that's, that's important for us to know. Well, it was, um, I think it was Gray, I always butcher his last name. Monterosa. Monterosa. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to Greg Monterosa. Monterosa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I, I mentored for the startup weekend a couple times. Close Quick just, adjustment. Just, a little adjustment. That's a close there, yeah. Perfect. Better. Perfect. Yeah. Chill. Good. Good. Um, yeah. So I helped him oh, out yeah. do some uh, some mentoring at the startup weekend, and then from there I just been following him and interacting with him via social media. Cool. And then um, I saw his Ken came on here, and I was like, oh, we'll see what this is all about. And yeah. I dug it, dug cool. the style. So I was like, oh, that's what's going. We're pretty chill. We're just like a, a few dudes hanging out, having beers sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, 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 no, no. sometimes, sometimes, don't chilling. expect beers sometimes all the time. Just see me. <laughs> <laughs> I have my cartoon yeah. can of is too soda water. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about um, Idea House and Co. So Idea House and Co. is a essentially, I mean, you have one email or you go to our website, you see all the last names. We're family owned and operated. Um, my father started the company back in '96, primarily just mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. um, he worked for Stanley Hardware and a couple other larger companies, and basically just like found this niche where he f was able to service smaller companies that needed the mechanical engineering and needed that expertise, but really had no way of getting it, and they okay. didn't have the overhead to really bring in a full-time engineer to uh, to service that need. So. Um, we drywalled our garage, started doing some mailers. Um, nice. Had a forty percent hit on our first mailing. Oh shit! Yeah, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it was. Was it like a free? Was it a free offer or something? What was no, it? No, no. <laughs> actually, um, it's surprising that how many people don't know about like free things that are out there, mm -hmm. um, and it's still free today. Are you guys familiar with References USA? References USA. No, no. no. So it's. I mean, not all the information is accurate, but it's a good start for like first-time entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. like, people that are starting up. Basically, if you have a library card and your library has it as a business resource, it's like essentially every business listing by their SIT code or the NASIS code um, and their industry. So you can start seeing competitors and it says general revenue size uh, for sales and then start talking about what they might be spending in certain areas. And you could spend money to get more information out of it. Mm. Uh, but back in 96 when we were just, you know, had no money and we're just starting out you know or my dad was starting out um it was basically he did a bunch of research on the type of company that he was looking for mm -hmm. um and we still kind of focus in on employee sites for our business because we're a service-based service -based business that's focused on companies that aren't too big because when they get too big they start internalizing a lot of our practices sure mm -hmm. um so we focus you know on like 
dollar amount, you know, annual revenue of a million dollars up to 50 or 75 million in annual revenue. Um, employee size, you know, we tend not to go above 50 because if you have more than 50 employees, 10 likely you have an, an engineer on staff. Sure. Right. Um, so we kind of narrowed everything down using Reference USA and, and kind of this big list of, you know, you know, I think it was like we started with like just 30 to 40 people, cool. sent out mailers and ended up with like 15 coming back. So what did the mailers say? Um, gosh, <laughs> 22 years ago. <laughs> what was the, what was the, what were you offering? I mean, it, yeah. it was, it was basically like, uh, it was a free consultation of what, you know, to see what you need and, and what we can provide for you. That cool. was okay. basically it, like introductory type meeting, just here are our services we can give you. Cool. Um, it resonated well at the time. Competitive levels were relatively low. Most people really weren't servicing that type of business in that type of model. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it resonated really well with the marketplace and kind of took off from there. Um, so at that time, I was 11, I think it was. Nice. Yeah. Er- early businesses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I remember when my you know my dad would have jobs and he had clients coming to our, our garage and I'm sketching out stuff as an engineer, quote, yeah, unquote, yeah, type yeah. thing. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, but, like, you know, and so from there, um, I have an older brother. He went through uh, industrial design, and so we added that to our services. Great. Um, and then I went, I started, you know, started out as engineering, thinking I'm going to go that route. And then I thought I was going to go um, design route and follow my brother. And then I went, you know, like, I think like, there's, there's, a, there's a part of this that's missing. And that's when I went into business development and got my... BA in business admin, minor in marketing. Nice. Uh, and really nice. kind of focused in on driving product development through business decisions rather than like functional problem solving. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's still a major component of it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, focusing on price points, ceilings, and all these things that, you know, drives the direction of development through what materials you use, manufacturing mm-hmm. practices, um, and things like that. And so now we're sitting here 20, 22 years later. We do all 3D printing in-house, engineering, design work, I mean, testing, you name it, brand development. I mean, majority of the time, we won't even take a client or an entrepreneur on unless we sit down and kind of understand their business model mm-hmm. and that they can, we feel that the, the confidence is there right. and that they can actually make the full length. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've sure. been for 20 years, we kind of have a niche of understanding who has it and who doesn't right. sure. at this point. Um, so yeah, we, it's just kind of not this point where enjoying it because it's, so, it's, it's the, the better that they do the better the, the, the yeah. more that you guys are seeing yeah exactly so um majority of our customers even though we focus on them growing a lot of them kind of keep us in the loop so mm-hmm. now even we have larger customers that have internal engineers and designers and they still have us on as consultants is right. helping them out um just because we were kind of a part of the process sure and the way we look at it is like we're only successful if they're successful uh, we focus on like the long term game and not really focus. You know, like I don't want. I need to pay the bills, but I don't really care if I can. You know, get an extra bonus out of this job because if you fail in the end, then I mean, it just kind of kills my long term business model. Sure. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. So, like, does the average person usually? So this is incredible. First of all, like it's really cool because especially when we're talking to people, you know, one of the things I think that one of the first episodes that I was a part of actually, we were trying to demystify and take away the intimidation factor um, behind creating a product. And like a lot of people don't know, you know, you were saying a lot of people don't know about US references or whatever, but um, a lot of people don't even know that there are places that like you that exist that actually can help them um, from zero to hero and kind of like (laughs) help them build out their idea and turn it into something real. I mean, I think we've heard Maybe there's a few commercials on that seem kind of like scammy that are like, you know, just give us your idea yeah, and we'll right. either the take it or shut it down and we'll, yeah. we'll file your patent for you right away. So like, like, like with a little chisel. Yeah, right? right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's cool to know that like people with good ideas, I guess, you know, yeah. however you judge it, can can come to somewhere and get like the advice they need. Um, so most people that come to you, would you like, do they usually, let, let's talk about like the small to small mid-sized businesses. Do they usually come to you with a pretty thought out business plan? Is it an idea? I mean, how does that work? Well, okay, so our clients kind of range from um, the garage startup. Like mm-hmm. I 
mortgaging my house to get this off the ground. We're in a garage right now, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice put in contact. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but like literally we have people that are like mortgaging their house to get something off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, then we have other clients that are fully funding, you know, their manufacturing. They've been around for 30 years, but we're just their kind of their design house, engineering house mm -hmm. um, to kind of service anything they need. Um, as far as focusing on the, the other portion, which is the entrepreneurs, the ones that kind of come in and don't have a clue about what's happening. Uh, you know, when it comes to a physical product, it's a little different because the majority you look at anything startup, it's like focused in app this or smart that or tech this of and course, everything. Like, sure. yeah. So when you look at like the product side of it, um, you know, they tend to be like just normal people, like, sure. uh, like a mechanic that's been a mechanic <laughs> for 20 years. And all of a sudden he like thinks about this little widget that would really make his job easier. Yeah. He's been doing well, something. Yeah. 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 Like he made this little thing at, you know, 10 years ago and he, now he just wants to make it a product. Cool. Um, so those guys, yeah, they have no clue when it comes to business, usually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so when you start like getting into the uh, the, the groups of uh, of entrepreneurs and and what they like, for example, I, I can tell you a story. Um, a gentleman came in with us. He wanted to do. He was a barber, and he wanted to do like this new branded razor type mm -hmm. thing, um, you know. And so we started going through some ideation on the design side. And then I kind of sat and I was like, well, let's look at like your business. Like, what do you want to do with this in five, mm -hmm. 10, you know, what, what's like your end game? Where do you see this going? Um, and I just ran a couple of reports from um, some different databases that tell you how to market size and, you know, other competitors in the market. Um, and the razor blade industry was like, and if anyone's listening, don't butcher me on these numbers. I'm going off of memory. <laughs> from seven years ago. Um, but the... You know, the the market is like $88 billion, it's a ridiculously sized, huge market. However, yeah. only like 3% is is con is not controlled by three brands. Okay. Um, it's like 97% is held by like Johnson Johnson, Gillette, yeah. Gillette, Gillette, whatever. Gillette, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it, it's just huge brands. Um, huge barrier to entry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But then the other 3%, I look at the number of filing of companies that was in that 3%, and it was over 10,000 names. And Dollar Shave Club just gave everyone a lot of hope. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really did. Um, and so when he sat down, you know, he, he has a, he had an idea. He had, the, you know, and from his perspective, he figured out how he was going to get the capital. He figured out the cost. He figured out everything else. Um, and then when it got down to, like, actually getting through and, like, making this thing go off the cliff was we looked at the numbers, 10,000, you know, people or companies divided by the 88 billion, 3%, and then you're stuck with, you know, I think it was like just shy of a hundred grand a year. Okay. And I asked him, I was like, so how much, you own your own barber shop. What, like, what do you, how much do you make being a barber? And he's like, well, you know, I, I make a little bit less than that owning and managing everything. I mean, it's a, it's a nice barber shop cool. on the West side somewhere. Yeah. But, um, but I said, you know, the reality is you're going to put all this risk in and your revenue right now, based off the numbers is an uphill battle. You're looking at like a hundred grand that you're going to get in revenue. And that's not taking out your cost of the goods, your marketing, yeah. your anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I said, honestly, if I were you, I would just open a second barber shop. Right. Take that hundred grand or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Like go <laughs> go take that money, yeah. go open another shop, put yeah. 10 more chairs in that shop and go that way. Yeah. Um, it just, it's, it's a much lesser risk and he can have a happier life and free up his time. So yeah. When it comes to entre entrepreneurs and like their business sense, you know, like some have it, some don't, some have it completely wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, I had one customer that had a phone dock for charging your phone because he's tired of his phone dying as he was traveling around it's like so it basically had this this uh you know your your cable plugged into the cigarette lighter and it went through the bottom and plugged sure. in. um like the market bear like the market competitor is the cup holder itself like nothing stopping some like just, right. just like plugging <laughs> it in and sitting in like oh, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and th but then the other part was like and we went through the full gamut with him i mean he really believed it I and mean, he we went through um you know one thing i didn't i didn't mention earlier is we so we have we do own half the factory in china so we're manufacturing any products that want to come through our you know any of our clients that want to go to that side we'll quote it and they, we can run the production over there if they want to take it somewhere else they can but sure mm -hmm. in this instance we did that um and he got into the marketing side of it and he was running like daytime ads in new york new york and i'm mm. like why are why you putting a car, car dog car? Yeah. in the middle of new york, new <laughs> yeah. york? And like no in your cab and right. <laughs> yeah. exactly you weren't even the cabs and ubers <laughs> like what? Yeah. 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 and it wasn't it's not even like it was in the suburbs like the soccer moms right. sure. yeah. like it was just like 
so yeah, he had it. He had this plan and he paid for everything. He had all of that. But at the end of the day, he just it missed the complete mark. Mm. And like, you know, we're there to try to kind of steer them in the right direction. Right. That's cool. It's like you're not going to see people walking around New York holding this dock with their, you know. <laughs> like, hey, like, like, hey, can I set my dock down here? Is that all right? You know, a, lot of, a lot of Ubers are really hooked up nowadays, though. I oh, this guy, sure. he, he, I, was, I was trying to finish up some stuff for, for you know, marketing for the podcast. And I was, I was, with videos, it takes time to render. And I almost ran out of power. And he's like, oh, give me your cord. I have like, everything you need. You want some water? Oh, also, I sell insurance. Uh, and I was like, what is happening right now? One stop shop, man. Somebody took a side hustle there. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Hold the level. Hold the level. That's, that's cool. I mean, it sounds like you're, you know, you have everyone's best interest in mind. And hopefully, you know, I guess you could be wrong. Um, and that's cool too. Yep. And, and I'm sure sometimes you are. But for the most part, you know, statistically speaking, you're, you're doing them, you're, you're doing them justice by, by giving them a reality that maybe, you know, they haven't looked into it. Like I, I've, I was listening to some, or I was yeah. reading some of your articles that you've written and, you know, like this constant theme was kind of a good idea versus a good business. Sure. Um, and that's something that I saw a lot. And that was interesting to me because I know a lot of times we just, you know, we, we just push people. We're like, you need to get the fire lit under your ass. You need to yeah. go for it. And it's like, you kind of, you know, the fire, but as soon as you're running away from the fire, you need to like look around and kind of right. adjust things. You need to be aware make sure of your that, surroundings. Yeah, make sure you can yeah. afford it. Make sure you're entering the market at the right time. Make sure that, you know, you have all of the pieces of your plan kind of written out. Yeah. So like one thing like, I would like to like focus with is, um, is like capability in my opinion and capability is number one. Mm -hmm. And you can repackage it as saying self-aware. Um, but like, your oh, capabilities, but like it, it's true because I like to I like to frame it as cap uh, as capability rather than self aware. Self aware is, is it's a broad term, and if you have an exploratory mind, you kind of get yourself to understand what that means. Mm -hmm. um, but when I look at it and go like, what are you capable of? Sure. Like, what do you have capital? Do you have like what are your skills? What are your connections? Mm -hmm. Do you have access to, in this case, in my case, manufacturing? Like, I look at what are you capable of? Sure. And, you know, like, it, the, like all the motivation, all like the Instagram motivation, all that mm -hmm. like crap that kind of just overflows like entrepreneur hashtags is great, but it's only great if like the right person, the right time and all the stars align and everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but like, I think like really understanding what you're capable of, what you're really well at, and then partnering and outsourcing some of those areas that you're not so great at, you know, like a lot of people say, just action's better than perfect. Well, it's like, it, you can also do it smarter and sure, not course, just do course. like a half-ass job right. and hey, I can hire this out, you know, you can use 99designs, Fiverr to get a graphic artist or a website. I mean, there's, there's areas that you can use to do things on the cheap to, you don't actually have to do it yourself. Yeah. And you also don't have to do it half-ass. Yeah, no, that's so. a good point. Yeah, that's what I was first thinking about starting a podcast. I was like, I don't know how to do anything. Uh, so, Dre, do you want to do a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I could uh, do the sounds. I could edit it, mix it. You know, he's like, cool, that's what we need. And then you know? we brought Dean on, and now he's doing all the writing and stuff. And I'm yeah. like, I'm just like sitting, hanging out. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's, it's super important. Like, and I guess, you, you know, it's cool because you bring a, a realist aspect to um, this big cloud environment where everyone's, yeah. you know, like you can push and you can do it. And you're like, well, you need to think about it a little bit before yeah. you just jump on in. And so well, I that's, think that's, like, that's cool. I think there's like a, like an ethical moral issue that I have personally. Good. Even better. Like when I tell somebody like, Hey, you can do it. Like just go <laughs> sell right. your house. Oh wait, you're, you, you made, you went to your kid's performance. Shame on you. You should have been in a business. Like I have a hard time telling people that because I know that they're missing in other areas. Yeah. Um, I have a hard time like guilting people into like not risking at all when I think it's irresponsibly risking it. Okay, sure. If they don't have like the like they don't have the means and they don't have an actual like feasible plan. Yeah. Right. Um, like if someone told me tomorrow they're gonna go start the traveling circus and they really believe in this and it's gonna be based out of like Central California and they don't want to travel more than fifty uh, fifty miles, like don't do that right <laughs> you should think I, about I mean, this and it's like you said you know it's a lot of people come to you they're mortgaging you know they're yeah. putting their mortgages up against these ideas and it's like almost you have a responsibility to them to be like don't lose your 
fucking house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, this ain't yeah. going to work, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's true. And, 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 and it's not, it, it goes the full gamut. I mean, it's not just day one. Day one, it's like, is this a good idea or not? Yeah, good. All right, sure. now, like, there's a lot of good ideas. Capital. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of great ideas. But, like, once you're realizing capital and then, like, in physical parts, you have manufacturing, which is a whole other gamut. Most mm-hmm. people have zero clue about. Like, they, they see something that's totally like, this is great, but how the hell did this cost $20? Right. And it's like, you just gotta know what goes into it. You gotta know the, yeah. the, prom, the, the distribution chain that's built. And like, if someone sold for $20, they probably bought it between $9 to $11. That person sold to them for probably somewhere between the four to seven dollar range. Sure, everyone's so, making everyone's yeah, making thirty so everyone's points going, at least. Like, exactly. You know, yeah, for sure. Exactly. So like when you're like you see a, you know something at Target, it's already gone through the buyer, the distributor, from a wholesaler, then the manufacturer. So right. something you know twenty dollars might cost the actual manufacturer to make it four to six bucks. Right. Um, but like, and then you have the understanding of amortization of tooling and how many parts you get out of tooling. I That's mean, right. there's a huge, yeah. if, like. Out of control. That's stuff I hear every day. I, I I work. Uh, my I I also work for a family business, yeah. uh, making investment castings. Okay. And uh, yeah, just dealing with like people have no yeah. idea how much it takes to to make their little thing. That you know, to them, it's just a number. Sure. That they have to at the end of the day, they just need it. Uh, they need to. They don't. They don't even ever see the thing. Yeah. They don't know what investment casting is. They probably don't even know much of what a casting really is. <laughs> They're like, we're not and shooting a video. Kind of what are we casting? With, I didn't break anything. We're not making a movie. What are we casting for? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Like how how much people just and how a lot of them are unwilling to accept the the reality of yeah. what it takes to actually make a thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and like when I you know give someone a, a bill for a tooling that's a hundred thousand dollars, they're like, and I'm like, fifty percent's due right now. They're like, wait, I don't have time to do that. I'm like, no, you have to give me fifty grand so I can start your tooling. They're like, well, what about the production parts? I'm like, that comes later. That comes later. That's a different PO. That will come. Uh, we'll get there. Trust me, I won't right. let you go. But that's that's really where uh, like all the th- the new three D printing and everything mm-hmm. and stuff is really helping a lot of of the smaller guys out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like when we use printing, typically we use it for an R and D process. Mm-hmm. Fit fun, fit form and function. Does it work well? How we intended it to work, mm. um, and from there, typically they are okay signing off on it. But then again, you get you know entrepreneurs that you know maybe she was a hairstylist and now she has this great brush that's going to change the <laughs> beauty, <industry. laughs> change the uh, hair of the industry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so you're going like, okay, but tooling is going to be, you know, $12,000. And in my world, $12,000 is like 12, 12 grand. Like, that's, probably, that's yeah. a pretty cheap tool. Yeah. And especially if you're looking at, I, you know, most of my tools, you know, for small projects, you're ranging from 5000 up to 50000 If it's a huge project, you can go into the hundreds of thousands. But, you know, if it's just a little widget, you're looking at that range and, you know, I tell someone about $12,000 and they're like, Oh my gosh, I had no idea. <laughs> but um, it's a brush. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a but brush. it's going to revolutionize the industry. Right, so exactly. It's gotta be. exactly. I actually had an epiphany one day to brush my hair this way. And so, yeah. Um, but you know, then you get down to you and it's like, well, I can amortize this in mm-hmm. the tooling, and then they sit happy and they're, you know, I've still paid for the tool, but they're happy because they just, some things they just don't understand. Yeah. Um, and so our job is I try to educate as much as possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you should see the tutorials I lay out for my clients. I mean, it is, it's like a five paragraph essay and just the body of an email with like twenty attachments, just nice. explaining <laughs> like blow molding or injection molding and all these things. And I'm but sure they read through each of them. I hope they do. In detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of want to backtrack it a little bit um, back to when you were saying, you know, your dad was taking care of one area, then your brother started taking yeah. over an area. And you kind of wanted to follow in the path, you know, first you were going to go do what your dad did and then you're mm-hmm. going to do what your brother did. But then you saw kind of a void in the business or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, how did you identify that? And like, was there like, was it like a glaring thing or was it something that you were kind of interested in and said, let me see if I could add value to this portion or what? So what's interesting, it, it's a two part question or two part, yeah, two part answer, I say. Um, one is the way I approach business is very much like my dad in engineering. It's very analytical. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, the process of which I go through theories and strategies is very similar to how an engineer would address a problem. Okay. Right. Um, but then when I went through my education and got, you know, the, the, I went through marketing, frankly, like 
in marketing, it was just like a big hodgepodge. It was just like, how much, how great can I make bullshit look good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so like, and for me, I came from like the realist side of having that engineering design background. Right. Going, like, uh, you guys are just blowing smoke at everyone's ass. Like, yeah. this is ridiculous. Um, and that's when I started seeing like, giving that approach to people. Because I also see that product development is a lot of my competition. They like, they do the same type of thing with design. Okay. And product design. Right. So like they throw in a bunch of things that don't even make sense and don't even like yeah. that's not even relevant to the product. Like I had one client I can't tell the the product itself, but I could tell you that it has nothing to do with women's running shoes and they made the color of the of women's running shoes is like the main theme to connect it to why they wanted to make something like a certain color. Yeah. And, like and they spent like hundred thousand dollars for this consultant to go through this and they come bring it to me and they're like what do you think we should do? I'm like, fire them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 86 of them. Yeah, yeah. Really? I don't know what you want to tell you. But... Real good color though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they're all like a, sh- like a shade off from each other. Oh. Like they're like, Jeez. you're just wasting money. Yeah. So like one part was I saw a, a, a big part of the market kind of focusing on the, the marketing side mm-hmm. of it or, you know, the, the beauty side of things right. um, and not really the reality the feasibility of the business. Okay. And so like, when I was, you know, analyzing everything, I always look at things as kind of a macro perspective. Um, and so when I'm looking at that from that side, I look and go, well, excuse me. How, do you, how do you justify spending it down that path? Like, how, right. like, where does it fit? I mean, I do some mentoring down at, at Cal Poly Pomona um, with their I Startup Lab. And uh, when I work with them, it's like, they'll bring a problem up, the students bring a problem up, and I say, well, is the market even big enough? You know, I go down like these reasonably, I think not crazy questioning right. mm-hmm. of will your business be successful? Um, and sure. like, I haven't seen a lot of our competition that does it or the ones that do, they like primarily focus on that. Yeah. Um, and then they don't really do a lot of the other like business sustainability side. Sure. Well, it's kind of like, I mean, you're front loading, right? You're front loading to make sure that you help them achieve the the highest and most sustainable level of success yeah. versus other people are like, hey, pay me ten thousand dollars and I'll help you write a business plan and set you up the prototype and yeah, exactly. get you into retail. And they're like, oh, it's you know, it doesn't really make sense. It's it's you could because you can come up with a great idea, you can come up with a great product, you can actually even go to market with it, but it doesn't mean that it's sustainable or it will yeah. be ultimately successful. Exactly. exactly. And like a lot of like for example, you have some people that come in this, with, the, with this idea and they go, I have this product and I think the target market is my demographic and it maybe it's a age 45 to 64 year old and he's, you know, male or whatever. Which by the way, if you ask me, if you like, I don't live in demographics, I live in lifestyle demographics, cool. okay. not yeah. age, sex, and how much you make every year. Because yeah, sure. I know a lot of like baby boomers that are horrible with money as well as like good with money. So yeah, it's yeah. like the stereotypes like, they're horrible and marketing uses them all the time, but yeah. crazy. It's true. Uh, but like, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> so, but anyways, they, they, uh, you know, the, the, a client will come with a, with this perspective on what, how they want this product to be designed. And they'll, they'll be like, well, I really love elegant wood finish. And so I want this widget to have a wood finish and I want a nice lacquer on top. Um, you know, and, and so like, um, you know, they call it like water dipping for like graphics. Mm-hmm. So like you yeah. use that for that, like an applique, right? Uh, but then I look at it and go, well, that's great and all, but what if you changed it slightly different mm-hmm. and then you opened up to a whole new market? Or, you know, like your market's only, you know, say it's a million dollars or $10 million. But if you make a small change that doesn't change the overall functionality or the, the you know, what your process is, but all you're doing is you're opening up to a marketplace that you're marketing to differently, you know, and that may be a material change. Or they say, this product, how it's designed, is going to have to be produced at $20. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to take $20 to produce. Well, that means you're going to customers going to be spending somewhere between 60 to 80 maybe $90. Yeah, so like, what's your, what's and your so, market spend? Yeah, so. yeah. and so you're looking, now, you're, now I'm trying to identify what's your price ceiling for your end customer. Like, what, mm-hmm. yeah. like you have this idea, what, what's your price ceiling? Like, what do you think your customer will pay for it? If you think your customer is going to be a 25-year-old, and you think that twenty five year olds are gonna not spend no more than thirty dollars on this product? Don't be spending twenty dollars. Well, that means <laughs> so that means from us going down the design side and the engineering side, we're looking at okay, well that that takes out certain manufacturing practices. That takes out uh, we're going with things you know that are more mechanically ran on a, on a, uh, automation rather than 
manual labor. You know, we're going to take a lot of things that are automated uh, and try to do that as much as possible so we can reduce that price. Yeah. Um, and so it really is a full, like, we're front-loading for their success, but we're also putting into our, the product and making decisions design-wise so that they have a successful product at the end they can sell. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, <laughs> Chris is, this is the wheels are turning. Man. It's a whole lot of stuff. No, I, I got a lot of thoughts on it, but I, I kind of want to switch gears a little bit because we're learning a lot about the awesome stuff that you're doing over sure. there. But I want to, uh, like, like you said, you found us because, uh, because Greg, Greg was, you know, he was, yeah. he was pushing his episode. I like, he was yeah. like, because of him, we have a lot more people coming on just like you. Good. Um, but you said that you were at the, uh, you, you do some mentoring at Pomona. You did the thing over here at, uh, at the, yeah. Uh, yeah, the tech, wasn't it sports tech stars? Yeah. yeah it sports I started over there. Yeah, tech, mm -hmm. I think tech, it was a tech stars. Tech stars, uh, yeah. 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 Um, why, why, did, why do you do that stuff? Why do you um, take the time to, to add your schedule uh, to, you know, and divert your time to something yeah, that... Yeah, well, it's, the first time I did it was our patent attorney um, that we use. You know, basically, we have a patent attorney that we just reference everyone to because we give a lot of ideas. We just keep pushing out to him. Cool. Yeah. Well, he was running the OC um, Inventors Forum. And so last February, I said, hey, can you come do a little speak, a mm. little talk? I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I went and did that, and I literally, at the end of it, had a line at, like, my stuff. I went to go pack up my bag, and I'm walking out thinking, like, all right, see you guys later. Long drive back from Irvine. Yeah. Um, and I literally turned around, packing up my stuff, and there's a line of, like, 15 people just wanting, to, like, more information. Hey, what do you think about this? How wow. should I do this? How should I do that? And I'm like... This is sad. Bing. Like, <laughs> no one's helping these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. So I'm like, all right. Yeah. Like, like, and so I stayed there for like another two hours just working through each one. That's cool. And I'm like, here, here's your card. And it was crazy. That night I had a guy. And uh, it's crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug it right now. But it's Finger Bell. And it sounds ridiculous. But it is like this fun little gimmicky thing. And he mm -hmm. knows it's that. And he is absolutely stoked up at that. <laughs> but he bought tooling. And it's this little silicone ring you put on your finger and you flick it. And it's like, it's like a, like a, like a bike bell. Yeah. Right? Uh, but it's for your finger. And he's down in Newport Beach. So he's like on the boardwalk. And I'm like running and stuff. He's like, ding, ding. Because I come up and run. Right? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's, that is. Yeah. I've never had that problem. I don't think I'll ever have the problem. But he did. And, you know, he said he's at, he just sat on it for years. Mm -hmm. And then he went that night to there. And he's like, hey, you know, you helped me get through some of the challenges. And I'm launching. And I'm getting this up and running. And I'm like, all right. And like today, he's still selling like boxes and boxes of these. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, where, where can you buy those things? Oh, God. Yeah, you may as well um, give him a true shout out. Yeah. Think, is it called Fingerbell? Finger Finger Bell? Yeah, it's called Fingerbell. Oh, I'll, I'll just, throw okay. a link up on the website. Yeah, I don't know if it's yeah, fingerbell.com or what it is, but it's Fingerbell. Yeah, it'd be huge in New York, like for a taxi. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, hand up, right? Right? Better like cat calling. Or, better. Like, <laughs> you, can't put, you can't put one on a, on a skateboard, right? <laughs> like, you, you gotta flick your finger. But, you know, it was one of those things that's like, for me, I didn't, you know, like, I never had that in my personal life. He didn't become a client of mine. He never paid me a dime. But it was one of those things, like, here's a guy that, like, and it feels good to freaking inspire yeah, Labor somebody. love. It, yeah, like, it feels great to just be like, I have a little bit of knowledge that can make your kind of, you know, perspective just widen up and yeah. make something happen. And so I was like, well, all right, cool. Let's do the next one. So that's super cool because, like, a lot of, and don't take this the wrong way, but um, this is... Uh, the like what we're talking about right now is probably a little bit more direct and maybe even um real but almost sure. discouraging to some people because they're you know everyone's on cloud nine like floating around like i yeah. have a great idea i can do whatever i want with it <laughs> right. but you know the fact that you are also objective to things that are really like super unique and innovative and it's, sure. it's a fucking bell on a finger yeah but the fact that you took the time you didn't shut him down obviously you motivated yeah. him and it, it's like you know, it, it doesn't need to be grandeur. It needs to be a good idea with a good person that has a that has the energy and the passion to mm -hmm. make it into something. Well, like I also that. think there's a problem with like startups in general that are trying to like end world hunger with every startup. And like, mm -hmm. you don't need to like be in the top headlines. Like mm -hmm. for him, it's a side business, little hobby of his, but it's something he started up doing and now he's doing it. And it's not his full time job, but mm -hmm. he's he's happy doing it. Yeah. yeah. And so when I look at it, go like, who am I to say that that's shit? 
I'm yeah. not. I don't, you want to spend time doing that? Go do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, if I, I'm just here to help you make it a little bit better. And yeah. hopefully, like, the probability of your success is a little higher. Yeah. That's it. No, that's cool. That's um, and so, yeah, after that, I went to Cal Poly. And some students popped in my office because I'm just north of Cal Poly. And they're like, you guys do, like, we what well, the entire year of our schooling was about. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And so I contacted the director down there. And um, I've been working with them for, this is the second year now. Nice, and they just invited man. me to, to join their leaderboard for that leadership wow, board. Congrats, that. so, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome, man. It should be it should be fun. But I mean it's it's one of those things it's like mentoring is I feel like you kinda of have to be and it's kinda of like my pulse in of the industry and kind of where things are going. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could tell you like the fidget spinner was literally like <laughs> two years ago's project in class and I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I still don't get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But okay. <laughs> they had it, and it was like I, they were there, and it was like, dang, like okay. So I'm starting to see trends pick up at certain mm-hmm. times, um, and you know, obviously, it's not my end all be all, but it is a point where I can give back to somebody, um, you know, and it does, you know, it helps putting my name out there as well. Yeah, sure. So, sure. Yeah. I, I just feel like it's one of those full circle things. How do you how do you get there. connected with uh, the tech stars and Greg? Um. I don't know if it was oh, Greg it necessarily, was, but... Uh, actually, like, I always ask this question, and, and I was um, writing for Youngery. I don't know if you guys know Ash uh, Kumra. Kumra. Yeah. Um, I was, did a couple of articles for Youngery. I went to one of their events, and this one guy sat there, and he goes, can I ask you, how did you, like, start writing for Youngery? How do you start getting these mentoring things? And I'm like... It's a big secret. Are you ready? And he's like, well, I was like, just ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally just Simple ask. Dude. Yeah. Like I spent a lot of time in Instagram going through, um, going through the, you know, direct messages, going back and forth, you know, um, same thing, like what I did with you guys, yeah. the same thing I do with yeah. Greg. Um, it's the same thing I do. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, you don't know where it's going to end up. And every once in a while you start getting that coming back towards you. Yeah. Um, and you start getting coming back and going, Hey, you know, I saw you mentored over here or Hey, you helped out with this group. Can you, I want to help over here, um, which is funny. Uh, one of the other mentors from that Tech Stars weekend was uh, Bo something. He's at he's at Oak Christian High School somewhere over here. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we all Down know. Him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, he was there, and he, you know, next thing you know, he's now emailing me. Yeah. He's like, "Hey, will you take on one of the senior projects?" And I'm like. If I don't have to drive up there, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. right, exactly. <laughs> you want to handle through email and video? That's fine. You're right, that's fine. right. That's, that's awesome, awesome, man. So, um, how have you been seeing that return? I mean, like, what? I know it's kind of hard to, you know, monetize. I guess you could say, but like, are you seeing it just in more people coming to you for more things, or is it just like a, a more self rewarding type thing and just kind of feeding you to do the next thing? Well, I think it, I think it's twofold for me uh, personally. Psychologically, I love like the interaction with complete strangers and mm-hmm. have these crazy ideas and help them out. Um, but I think the other part is like you should meet Chris, by the way. For <laughs> complete stranger, crazy ass ideas. We're not gonna make hot mic though. <laughs> no, we're not doing hot mic. So uh, but the other part is, uh, you know, I, I I feel like when I do something like this or something, a mentor somewhere, go do a, a talk somewhere. I just feel like everything business-wise kind of picks up a little bit. Okay. You know, everyone in the office is walking with a little more balance in their steps. Yeah. People are talking more. People are laughing. They see our name on social media a little bit more. So it's just all the, all around just kind of uplifts the energy. And I feel when that energy's up, good things happen. Yeah, more, more production. That's yeah. great. Man. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, we were talking about like when we had a, a you know our, our initial call, um, you guys made the decision to go from sourcing uh, the manufacturing plant to taking up some ownership in it. So, like, how was like what was the decision making process in that, and and what have you seen as the return? I mean, just you know, because well, a lot of people are gonna be going through kind of a successful sure. business and they want to figure out how to make it more successful. So, yeah. um, well, the 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 big thing with dealing sp- specifically with China as well, mm-hmm. um, was there's a lot of things that are misconstrued. There's a lot of things that are said to you that aren't true. Mm-hmm. Um, and we found a factory that we were working with for, you know, eight or nine, maybe 10 years on it at mm-hmm. this point, I forgot. Um, but it was about, you know, around that range. And then the owner of the factory came to us and they said, you know, that we want to open a joint venture with another U.S. company so that we have someone in the U.S. that 
has something to lose and sure. isn't just like an import. Because at the same time, just as much as there are importers and exporters in the U.S. burning up factories in China um, and Chinese factories burning up U.S. importers and exporters, yeah. um, you also have chi- good Chinese vendors that are getting burned by importers and exporters as well. So mm. like, yeah. if like we, you know, as a, in the U.S., we kind of look at things from our perspective and go like, oh man, Chinese, it's crap you build or they're going to try and screw you and all these, you know, all these horror stories. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reality is like from their perspective is like they ship the product and if they're a good quality and they're not trying to screw you, they want good people importing it as right. well. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so it was kind of a, a win-win on both of us. And so... When we started doing that, what we got out of it was an incredible amount of insight to employee costs, um, raw material costs. Mm-hmm. I could see what their profits are. Um, and I'll disclose those profits to my customers. Yeah, cool. Most importers won't. I mean, it's like this weird, like, you know, Wizard of Oz curtain type deal. <laughs> but like, I don't know what happens. It's a number pops out, and if you pay it, you get a product. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it just became like where we were able to kind of break down those barriers and you know, lessen the smoke and clear up the mirrors and cool. make things very clear. So okay. people understood what they were buying and, and how we, how the prices got to where they were. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's comforting for me if someone screws up, I give, you know, I can have my management staff there fire somebody. Um, so it makes things a little bit easier to manage Yeah, and I can show up anytime. I yeah. can fly over there and go in. Nice. So I don't have to worry about, you know, are they telling me the truth? You know, sure. is the tool maker building this in on like dirt floors and like, you know, <laughs> like, so we have standards that we have to meet by our criteria that we've established with them. We've d- done a ton of work with our QC to have the controls. And, and if we didn't own half the factory, we wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't be able to establish or impose my QC into their factory and be like, no, 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 you're going to do it this way. And oh. by my standard. Sure. Um, and so they just basically tell me to, Kick rocks, dude. I don't want to deal with you. Uh, you, you you're, you're, just go away. You don't get your money back. You're done. Mm-hmm. Um, so now it's turned into where I have controls. Is that, that's a major gain. And my clients, a lot of them, even when they, I have some clients, I'm like, if you want to, if you want to manage your production, you can go talk to my staff in China and deal with them. That's fine. Um, but majority of them do that for like three months and they come back and like, please handle it. Like, bro, <laughs> deal with it. Deal <laughs> with is, it. Yeah. This is a nightmare. <laughs> um, you know, and I try to make it as easy as I'm like, okay, so this is what CIFLE means. This is, and these are all shipping terms. I'm like, yeah. here's FOB, you know, here's, you know, our first article from tooling is this. I'm trying to explain mm-hmm. all these things and it's like, they just, at the end of the day, they're just like done. Just, yeah. You go do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's that's smart. You know, like a lot of people need to learn how to leverage their strengths. It goes, it goes back to what I, what I yeah, exactly. teach is capability. To understand yeah. that you're not, this isn't your area of capability. Yeah. Your capability is, is managing it once it gets here. Where is it going to go? Right. How are you going to distribute this? Right. right. You know? So you took on some of your manufacturing plan. You you gain control of the supply chain. And then you kind of pass on that transparency and control to your customers. Which sure. I think is... Yeah, because I think the one thing, especially in my perspective, everyone thinks I'm trying to screw them. Like, mm-hmm. I handle polls and there's like, that's so much more than I thought it was going to be. And I'm like, well, like, I'm sorry, you have no frame of reference, most of you. Like, right. <laughs> most of my clients, yeah. they, they're like, they've never developed anything. Right. So, like, their frame of reference is already kind of skewed. And so, you know, they're thinking, well, it maybe should cost $2,000. And I'm like, well, no, it's like a $10,000 job. Or right. you know, it's a $50,000 job, whatever it may be. But it's still like, having to open that up more yeah. where I can show the transparency and be like, no, no, here's why it costs this much. Sure. Um, really kind of starts breaking down that like distrust. That's cool. And it develops, and it, when they, we develop the product and it goes to manufacturing, it also helps out because they've already been working with us for, you know, 12 to 18 months producing the product. Yeah. Then if we go to manufacturing, like, well, I already trust you. I've been working with you. I know you. So long, right? You've built yeah. up the rapport. And That's like cool. I said, we don't hold anything ransom. So it's like, if you want to go manufacture, you can go to Mexico or another plant in China and find someone on, on Alibaba. I mm-hmm. can't guarantee you're going to get your product. Sure. Right. Can't guarantee it's going to come how it should. Yeah. May not make it through customs, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look at U.S. manufacturing like in towards the beginning of this, or you so, always kind of went for foreign? No, we actually um, only have that as really an option uh, for customers. We have U.S. manufacturers. It doesn't make sense for us to go through the expense, yeah. uh, just because that's already serviced well enough here. And like I said, if my customers want to take manufacturing in the U.S., I give them references. Sure, that's hey, cool. Here's injection molding. I know. Here's this person. I know. You have. You need this. Go do that here. 
Um, so yeah, it, it just comes down to the customer and really what their needs are. Um, a lot of them are focused on price ceilings. So yeah. they're looking at going, well, I have to get it for this price. And, you know, I always try to talk them through the volume game, right? So you're sitting, your opening order is 5,000 units. Well, 5,000 units in the U.S. is your setup cost plus your labor cost plus everything yeah. else that goes in the front end. The amortizer costs 5,000. And then if you look at like offshore, it's like that's like a third of the cost. Sure. Right. The work's the same though. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when you sort of look at it like that, and it just kind of comes down to, but if you have an, a larger opening order or I have a lot of clients that will do they'll do Chinese tools, import them in, and then have them modified for U.S. labor to produce them. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So, so, you, just, so you open up the doors and, and let yeah, them choose which one they think is appropriate. It's like the yeah. Matrix, right? Choose a pill. Yeah. Right. 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 Matrix reference, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's widely uh, consum- consumer-based products, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah what's we, the range of products that you manufacture? That's a good question. Okay. Um, let's see. We talked about the car dock, which is... <laughs> uh, we have a uh, we had a BioScan uh, password keeper that was about three years ago, four years ago now. Um, it was basically Bluetooth linked to your to your computer, uh-huh. so you scanned your thumb, so you don't have to, you can have really long elaborate passwords for Amazon bank account, all these other things, and not mm. have to remember any of them. That's cool. Uh, nice. So that was one. Uh, we did a electric scooter. It's a three wheeled scooter. It basically rides like snowboarding. You lean to your toes to so steal the cycle board. Cycle board. Okay. Yeah. So we did all the development. Sorry, (laughs) sorry, I interrupted. That's just fucking sick. (laughs) So we did that all the way from design all the way through um, engineering, manufacturing, and and deployment. Um, You did the Kickstarter for that too, right? We didn't do that. We didn't manage the Kickstarter. Our client they hired the Kickstarter out, which um, is a whole nother game. That's a whole nother podcast. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) That's like I mean, yeah. Where the, the, the road, the path of Indiegogo and Kickstarter is. Yeah, right. it's getting very oversaturated. I feel like it's not as prevalent as it was either. Uh, well, I, maybe maybe not. Maybe, maybe you have I a different think, experience, but I feel like it hasn't, there's just too much of it. <laughs> well, I think what you end up with, besides like the, like the big pen holders, you know, like you put the ink in and it's like this like billet aluminum that someone like, we used a lathe. To like machine out, yeah. yeah. It's like that, or like some tech company that came up with this fully designed product. And like a lot of these aren't really like aren't real startups anymore. Like a no, lot of them aren't no, like yeah. people in their garages <laughs> trying to do what they are starting out to do. Yeah. Um. A lot of them are like, I mean, my client went through it, and they're like, "Well, you can't use photo photo realistic renderings." And he's like. I'm using Kickstarter to start my production. I don't have any product. Right. <laughs> and they're like, well, you can't use pictures and renderings. And he's like, um, what do you want me to use? Right. Like, and then you see other you see other campaigns and like they are using computer oh, yeah. renderings. And it's like, right, right, right. so it's like campaign by campaign, different yeah. rules, different things. Like or super troopers, a, a lazy like, yeah. person just. Clicking the button, saying "Yeah, pass it." No, nope, no, nope, that, that, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, Ooh, I like that one. And just because he likes rock climbing, it happens to be like sure. a rock climbing backpack, right? <laughs> right. Um, and and the other thing is like they have a whole like second generation of marketing companies that are focused on crowdfunding marketing campaigns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which is not cheap. I mean, I have customers that have spent twenty to forty thousand dollars just in the marketing campaign on the that's, own load. That's yeah. so like. Sheesh counterintuitive that it was a platform that was made for people that are inexperienced but very creative and now it's like this platform you can exploit like yeah exactly <laughs> it's just, exactly it's, it sucks yeah, and, like, and, and, and it's packaged like sadly it's packaged for people that are not in the industry mm-hmm. that of product development and startups yeah, to, so they're so easily like, manipulated so they too, look at yeah. it and they're like oh this little startup out of San Francisco they, they need our money and it's yeah. like let's go buy 50 of them <laughs> and then it's like some like those, startup those need- that's me with this bag right here. <laughs> I got this backpack on Kickstarter, and yeah. uh, it was a couple hundred bucks. But this, this, the guy backing it, you know, he's he's working with a startup that a startup, you know, like yeah. they're <laughs> he's just one of those like, and, thirty and year startup. And, product. Product. and <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying this like talking shit on the products themselves. A lot of them are great products, mm-hmm. but the reality yeah. is like the frame of reference of why it originally started and what people yeah. were using it for to what it is today it's is like night and day. Now. Yeah, right. now it's like just pre-orders. Yeah. yeah. And I tell I tell some of my customers like don't even use Kickstarter. 
Just use social media ads and do your own pre-sales direct to your customers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like just cut them out of the game. Yeah. Get right. some VCs on the pro. You know, like there's. You a lot don't even of need different... VCs though. That's true. I mean, yeah. think about it. You can open up an, uh, a Shopify or a Wix e-commerce website, put up pre-sales, take in orders on you know fifty percent of it. Yeah. Let them know preemptively that they're gonna get it in six months. Yeah. You know, and spend a little bit of money with yeah. the legal side to make sure you're lined up legally, um, and and what you're promising. But yeah, it's like you can cut out that. Because right now you're competing just to get on like the front page of Kickstarter. Yeah, now. It's like, yeah that's the it's thing a whole that you want. Like, <laughs> well, like they have people that are giving like they'll give their friends each a dollar, right? Like they'll have they'll find they'll go on Facebook and go, I'll give everybody a dollar. Just go donate a dollar in the first day, hmm. because the you know a lot of the algorithms are yeah, theorized, yeah. but one of the theor- theory of the algorithms is that like it's number of backers per day. And that's how it gets ranked into the first page. Got it. And, and again, this is what the theory is. Yeah. I'm not saying this matter of fact, but the theory. Um, but like We've would, cracked Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, but the, the, some of the theories, one of them is that it's number of followers per day is how they'll bump up the ranking. Sure. So if you're on day one, it's say 500 followers or 500 backers, so 500 backers per day. Then day two, if no one backs, it's 250 per day. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, from there on out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it starts bumping up the ranking. And it's like, but you didn't like, you just... Hack yeah. the system, yeah. Right. yeah. Like, so, no. well, you didn't want to talk about Kickstarter, but we ended up talking about. I know we just did. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, oh, yeah. So you were talking about your uh, your too. range of products that you guys yeah. manufacture. Uh, so yeah, we have the cycle board. Um, I was thinking of what else you have right now. Um, Lobster sports. If anyone plays tennis, uh, you know the red cases that like, spit what? balls out. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, we, we do. We've done the engineering for them since two thousand four. That's oh, cool. Sure. Um, and so now we're doing all the design work and you know, they source manufacturing through us too. Um, so, so what, I mean, like, instead of getting like actual, like what you're doing right now, yeah. like what is, what hypothetically can you manufacture anything? I mean, is it, you In know, theory? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's like, I have mental, I have mental, I have a <laughs> medical and dental equipment that we've done. We've done consumer electronics. Um, you know, we have a full team. Uh, for electronics, so it, I mean, what can we do? We've got aviation antennas. We've done skateboard trucks. We've done, uh, what was it um, uh, wakeboarding holders for the okay. side of wake wakeboard boats? Cool. Uh, little compression sleeves, you know, right, right, right. boarding. Um, so like, it really like it, it's you know, the yeah. sky's the limit. We've done everything. Cool. One of our clients is Hair and Beauty, surprisingly, and bottles. That's a huge market. Yeah, is huge bottles. <laughs> um, so. Essentially, until like recently, the only thing they had that was uh, pressurized was aluminum rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're familiar with what that is, it's basically the like a Gillette, like uh, the shave like gel. Like the shave can. Yeah. 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 So the way that's produced is you have a bag inside that's connected to the valve. And what they do is they pressurize it. That's why no gas is released. So mm-hmm. it squeezes the bag, essentially. It's a higher pressure they put in. Uh, but no one's been able to put that into mm-hmm. a plastic bottle. Well, we, we developed that with our client. You now it's a plastic bottle with a bottom cap, and it's the production is the reason. So when you have a new product you want to launch in that market, it's mm-hmm. all about speed to market. Sure. And so for a Boston round or the, the, the aluminum round cans, it could be a 12-week lead time, 16-week lead time. Well, with the plastic bottles, once you open a tool, they basically send me a PO, you have bottles in three weeks. Wow. Sure. And so for a lot of... <clears throat> People in that industry, they're coming to us, and, and we can do a lot more different shapes. So, like, the aluminum balls is basically the same, you know, right. straight. Yeah. 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 With the plastic ones, now we can do, you know, shapes and contour and different things. Right. That's cool. Yeah. And in beauty, that's a huge thing. Everybody exactly. just goes yeah. for the looks. And, yeah. That was literally what, I think that was what we discussed, like, on that episode when I was talking about... Um, like going to a lab, breaking oh, down, right, a, right, 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 breaking down the makeup of, of certain liquids or something, and then usually the labs nowadays have, you know, different uh, go tos like manufacturers or they own their own manufacturing site yeah. for the different balls and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. that's cool. You just a you you just a, a go to market one stop shop yeah. uh, essentially. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know we, our customers range at any point. We have some customers that come and they're like, "Well, I've done like a year of prototyping." Mm-hmm. I need you to like just finalize it and then okay. give me a packet to go take to manufacturer for drawing specifications. Okay. Sure. I'll give you a proposal for it and we run from there. And then sometimes we have customers that are that come in and they're like, I don't have the money for this proposal, but I have 50%. Do you want to take equity? Oh. Mm. 
Okay. And so that turns into another opportunity for us as well. I mean, course, we're very selective, but right. Um, and obviously, I'm very harsh on the, like the business model of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to know for myself, um, and if you don't want to give this away, don't. But what's the most bogus shit somebody's <laughs> come to you with? <laughs> Hopefully, they uh, yeah, aren't listening. Listen yeah, exactly. <laughs> It wasn't the finger bell, so... Yeah, yeah no, that's it. That, was, that was fun, but... Um, I mean, there are some that I just don't even get. There was, you know, there was one... There was one lady that wanted... Um, she was a Native American, mm -hmm. and she thought that there was no dolls or um, cartoons for Native American little girls. Okay. Um, so she wanted me to help her develop an entire Native American doll... Like ran. Line. Yeah, and I'm like, but like there's kind of this has kind of already been done. Like Pocahontas is done. Yeah, like, well, <laughs> yeah, but it's not it's not just Pocahontas, like there are other brands yeah, that yeah. have like done sure, like, yeah. like, like a, the American girl dolls aren't right, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Like they have like very they have varying <laughs> nationalities, sizes, right. like I don't know if you're really solving a problem here. Um and she wanted me to like she wanted me to partner with her. And then go pitch this to studios to make a cartoon for this. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm, I'm like, oh, we're wait, getting into I, it. <laughs> you're like, that, what have you done? So yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, goes back is, to that capability. Like, yeah. uh, exactly. It's like, are exactly. you just capable of being Native American? Exactly. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, is by the time by the time I get in front of somebody, um, you know, kind of the ones that have the crazy ideas that don't make any sense, mm. they kind of kind of already you know, get out of the way. Mm -hmm. By the time I'm talking to them, usually it's like, they're just not, like feasibility, they just don't make sense. Right. Like those are the ones I look at and I'm just like, you're not going to make anything with right. this. There's no market here. Or if it is a market, there was one, um, one of the, someone stopped in my office. And the thing is, I always talk to somebody, we take all of our clients and I do a consultation with them completely free just to get the out of the way. Like, right. just understand where is your mind. Like, mm -hmm. and how are you coming to this problem? Right. And is it really a problem? Yeah. Um, I had one person come in and they said, they went, can you develop a turtle bridge? I was like, mm. I, I think that's a name for something else, but I don't understand. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean by turtle bridge? And she's like, like I'm like, real turtles? Oh, a bridge so, that you go slow on. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm gonna, no. <laughs> 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 but it's legitimately has these turtles in her backyard, and, and they they only go up certain slopes apparently. And again, Whoa. my job is to understand problems, and then I can understand the solution <laughs> to them. It's a huge game of empathy and sympathy yeah, that I have to have. Sure. But you know, and I, and by the end of it, she's got me thinking this is a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> by the end of it, I'm like, damn, there are Those no poor turtles. Like pitch to Petco. <laughs> yeah, these poor turtles these can't poor get turtles. anywhere. <laughs> this is terrible. Like, have you written anybody about oh, this? Oh, man. <laughs> Who should, we should contact someone else. PETA? Somebody? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, there's got to be somebody to stand up for the turtle rights. Right. right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, and so I, I told him, like, I mean, you sound like there's a lot of turtle people that can use this. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah, there might be. I go, have you started a website? She's like, I haven't yet. I go, okay, do some homework. Go start a website and try to sell some. I was like, can you make them if you wanted to make one or two? She's like, yeah, I can. I'm like, then just start a website and see. Sound motivated. I was like, see if the production becomes a problem. And that's another thing I really focus on, too, mm -hmm. is... If it's not a problem, stop pretending it is. Yeah. Like, I, one of my, a lot of my customers are like, well, what about this? And what if somebody uses the product this way? And I'm like, that's great. But they haven't. Yeah. Right. Stop. You're, yeah. getting, you're cool. getting in your own damn way. Right. You know, like, mm -hmm. she's worried about, you know, can I produce this for this price? You don't even know what anybody wants it yet. Right, exactly. Like, what are you exactly. wasting your time? You can make a website and spend 200 bucks or 500 bucks, build a website, put some pictures up, put, you know, e-commerce on it and see if you get one, one bite. Yeah, you get sure. Start a blog of like <laughs> yeah turtle advocates. Yeah, or like look in the yeah. turtle community or, and or go to a, like a, like a turtle trade show. There's gotta be one, right? Or, yeah, or go to a zoo <laughs> and see if there's a zoo that is missing. There's a gotta be an exclusively <laughs> turtle zoo somewhere. Yeah, yeah. the change we need a turtle exhibit at your Or you talk, you, check. you look at the turtle and you're like you could use a bridge, and then talk to the owner and be like, "Have you thought about making them a bridge?" Right. Go to turtle yeah. owners. Yeah. You have to talk to Master Splinter to get to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with his layers. But yeah, it's just one of those things. You just kind of have to make like you have to find 
uh, you, you're trying to already solve a problem by bringing a product. Right. And the other thing is like, once you have that, you don't necessarily have to make a bunch of shitty problems happen to the product before it even happened. Sure. sure. Right. Yeah. Like just make it happen and we'll see what happens. Yeah. We can always make changes. Right. I think that's the approach that we take on the five o'clock hustle because we've, you know, it's interesting. We, we spoke about this, I don't know, a few weeks ago or something. We were like, who the hell are we targeting? Like, you know, because usually I'm I'm like you are. I'm like I still don't know super, who I'm targeting. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> At this point, we're targeting people like you because that's what we're looking for is content, yeah. right? So, yeah. but we don't know who's listening to it. We don't know who's interested in this conversation. Right. I think nope. you know we hit a lot of different aspects, but it's like I don't think there's a problem with that. You know, like based yeah. on because the problem that we don't, we don't necessarily know the problem we're solving except for lack of strong content on podcasts. So yeah. right, that's exactly. that's what we're filling in, but we don't really care. Who's, listening to it there's no problem with that but yeah i'm all i was trying to say is i'm i'm like super analytical and very procedural like you to where i'm i'm like i look through a business plan but like i've come up with a bunch of ideas i've probably written 80 full-on yeah. business plans in my life yeah. like where i'm just like i'll write it down i just i spend the first three weeks killing it sure and that's just what i enjoy doing but it's <laughs> like also there's sometimes like when we're doing this podcast and just like yeah that, let's, that, just, let's that, go baby let's that was me <laughs> with without as much planning I'm not I'm, I'm not I'm not a full blown planner. I just kind of <laughs> try it, and then if it catches, then you know, then it kind of like hot from there. Yeah. Hot yeah. mic did not make the cut, <laughs> but, but um, but I just we're at about an hour here. But okay, before we start wrapping this up, I want to do one little kind of. And it's name the sequence the segment's name is kind of pending we don't, still. We don't have a name. <laughs> One week it was how it's how do you make it? How do you make it? And then the next week it was like because we're gonna get into trouble. Right, exactly. And the next week it was like how are you gonna do it, bro? Like we didn't know what it was. So. <laughs> but <laughs> this I guess is our segment. Like let's let's start a business segment. Whatever. Yeah. Anyways, I think this is a good opportunity because because of your experience. Sure. We're and you on the spot. I I, I, I I have something for that that could kind of maybe fit it, into something. It better not be fucking hot, Mike. Bro. It's not. <laughs> yeah. No, this this would be a uh, an actual you know product, a, product. A, a tangible hold thing you can hold. In your hand. <laughs> maybe you can. You probably wouldn't want to hold in your hand all the time because. It would be heavy, I think. Well, what is it? Okay, so in, <laughs> well, what is a little it? background. Um, uh, when I was uh, wrapping up uh, my, uh, my uh, business school uh, at Pepperdine, I was in an op- entrepreneurship class. And we had to like think of a product. It was, it was an exercise where you had to think of a problem. And then for some reason, my group decided that the biggest problem that they could think of is their workplace refrigerators were so stuffed with everybody's food and people were stealing each other's food mm. and um, they didn't like that. And I was like, this is a terrible idea. Like, problem to, <laughs> to, to The, the solution this. is don't be a douchebag. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> don't eat your people's food. food. If you didn't <laughs> cook it, don't eat it. If you didn't cook simple. it, don't eat it. <laughs> but what, what ended up happening is we came up with some ideas. My, my idea won. I'm not saying it's a good idea, so don't, yeah. <laughs> so don't, don't, don't have any like, assumptions that this is going to go let's well. Go, let's go. Okay, but um, let's let's take this this thing. We, we're, I, I titled the Tauntaun after the Star Wars films because it, it's a refrigerator unit um, that is small enough to be individualized but stackable so you can put them in public areas such as like a, an office building or some somewhere of that sort. Mm-hmm. Um and um like so what like what is that size so we can is it like a lunch box is it like a lunch box or so or is it like a lunch box okay (laughs) there's a actually made a i made i did a 3d rendering of this thing well i didn't do it i have dan gary do it (laughs) (laughs) but uh no it was it's about the size of uh like what you would find in a pull out cabinet drawer in your in your desk okay okay Uh, maybe a little bit narrower or not as long um so you know about Yay, big yeah, like yeah, one yeah. and 12, a half, like a toolbox. Let's just say the like size a, of a toolbox. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, like but just box. think of like if you wanted to take your drawer out, you could technically yeah. just pop it right in there in place, and then you'd have your refrigerator at your desk. Yeah. Um, sure, you could have your own. You, they already make mini fridges, right? But uh, the whole thing was that they are. Uh, it would be a communal situation where people could use them in a public environment say like oh here's a here's a better example the the lockers that you find at like uh, amusement parks that you rent yeah you could you rent these key. yeah yeah okay. so you, yeah. You, the the another idea was that it's a thing where anybody could use it it doesn't have to be your refrigerator but it can be activated some whether it's a key sure. that you 
whatever. Yeah. It could be very complex. It could be All right. electronic. So it's like the refrigerator it. version of those lockers kind of thing. Exactly. Okay, cool. That's what it is. Okay. So, How do you get this? so the question, so the question <laughs> a wall is, refrigerator <laughs> with a key. Okay. Yeah, and then another, uh, there, it got super complex, like where each one powered itself because there was like two prongs that came up, and then it's it was also this what made them stackable what is what powered the next unit. So you only needed one uh, plug to uh, to you know power several units. So yeah, I would have okay. taken a completely different approach to that. Well, I would I would have taken like like a, like make it more of like a like a quick swap with a battery. Okay. You know how like a quick swap battery, you pull it and just plug it back so in. So the right? frame, the frame. See so how you build a frame, and then there's slots that you put. You slide in the lunch thing, and and just and then you can buy just and and <laughs> as an employer, that and I would be looking at that as like, who's your who's your market? It's not yeah. it's okay, not. Okay, so the that's employees. the first thing you'd look at, right? Who's your market? Yeah, who's okay. your market? Like, who are you selling this to? Like, this is a very complicated problem you're trying to solve because. Frankly, you're like you're trying to build an infrastructure that the employer has to buy off on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the workplace, and so like your real customer is going to be the employer, mm-hmm. not right. necessarily yeah. the employees. And so, how do you solve it to where it makes him understand and want to do this? Sure. Um, and so, I would be look. I would if I were you, if you're my client, I'd be looking at, or if I was mentoring you, I'd be looking at you know focus on go talk to the HR of companies and see how much bickering happens because of, of <laughs> yeah. stolen lunch. Stole Somebody lunch. ate my see? fucking pizza two days ago. <laughs> like, like, are you that, serious? Like, like that, that actually happened? I was like, are you serious? Whoa, no way. <laughs> and this my, goes back I, to yesterday. No, is just be a decent just person, just, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Oh, exactly. exactly. But, but, but this is a real <laughs> issue. Like if this leads to other issues in the workplace or leads to yeah. reduced productivity, other things, now you're having to solve the. That's the problem you're solving. Yeah. See, like day one, you're solving an employee problem, not an employer problem. When the employer is the customer, right? You see how sure, that switches, yeah. and so right. and how you have to package that problem to be really solving for the employer because mm-hmm. he's the one's got to buy off on it. Now, yeah. if it's a personal thing, you could also take it into being a lockable lunchbox that you put into a into a refrigerator. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. your employee is the customer again, and the the cost to that customer is going to be a lot lower. It's going to be easier to develop, easier to implement, mm-hmm. and you don't have to have an ecosystem built in. It's kind of the problem you have with like all the electronic, you know, bikes and other things in cities, you know, for public transportation. You have to kind of buy off in the full ecosystem. It could be done. Mm-hmm. It's just a larger barrier to cross. Yeah. Now, Dean, is that a pivot? I'm still not fully clear on this pivot situation. Explain the pivot. You've written a lot of stuff about pivoting. <laughs> I think. We, I mean, it's not a pivot. Is not a pivot. Is more. I mean, the way I've seen a pivot is, is it's uh, think of it as trial and error, and then adjusting your approach based on your findings. So that's right. That, that would be that a would fair be kind of to, a pivot. I mean, yeah. So and, and I just I actually just taught a class at Cal Poly or did a talk or you want to call it down about this. You're so funny about the pivot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> still, still don't get this pivot so thing. Sorry, you taught a class. So that's yeah, awesome. yeah. So, but like the, the one of the students was like. So I just keep changing my idea to fit the market. <laughs> like I just, I just throw out the original idea, and I'm like, "You're not throwing out the original idea." No. The, what you have to understand is, the first problem you're having, you, you don't have the real problem. And so, like, like for example, you said the problem is so, is someone stealing my lunch. Well, as you work through that process of that problem, you're realizing that that's not really the problem. It's a workplace environmental problem. Yeah. And now you have to solve that issue. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so like when you're pivoting, you're finding out that you're the the real problem that you're trying mm-hmm. to solve. And adapting your solution based on your findings Correct. of that problem. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So you're not changing like your position on something. So that's a pivot though. The the refrigerator being, you know, into a lockbox, like turn into a, a lockbox into yeah, it would be a pivot because it's a pivot, it, true, yeah. nailed it. Pivot. pivot. <laughs> sure. <laughs> see, I would see like the pivot as like you had this workplace issue which started the whole thing. And then you but then out. where I would say, like you said, now it's on the employer, not necessarily yeah. the employee. And then kind of, I don't know, not identifying a different problem, but identifying a different area. So I would say like, you know, I have a, I have a two-year-old son and at his school there's a bunch of allergies and stuff like that. And there's a huge communal place where you put their lunch boxes, you yeah. know? So I would yeah. say move that instead of a workplace, move it to a school sure. where now you can individualize where these things are and, and you know, avoid cross-contamination. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, that. That, that's the second step to 
how it's done or whatever you're calling how, yeah, how you're gonna do it. How are you gonna, gonna, gonna put that together? <laughs> how are you gonna do it, bro? <laughs> hey, that, that's the one right there. Yeah, we'll, call it, we'll call it a. Uh, nope, that's it. How are you gonna do it, bro? With the sad bro. I think it needs the sad bro. 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 Oh. <laughs> uh, but like, that's another thing. The, the second part of that, the first is, you know, like, who's your customer? But then, like, start opening up from there and going, how else can this be used? What other sure. markets can can use this? Where are lunch boxes or who else eats lunch? Mm-hmm. Who else has lunch problems with their food? Right. Who else has lunch around other people they don't know? Yeah. And then that starts going down into the process of schools and starts going to colleges and starts going to dorm rooms. And, and then you start understanding like, well, there may be a bigger issue here than just the employer solving the problem because I may be able to develop a product that is solved on multiple facets and different yeah. groups but it's the same product and I'm not asking any employer to buy off on some ecosystem of lunch sure. boxes. Right. Yeah. yeah. One, one thing that we did the, to, as the idea developed was the technology that was cooling the unit, um, was a thermo, um, thermo coupling, something or another, <laughs> but basically, uh, it has a certain, uh, uh, the polarity makes it cool, but the same technology, if you switch the polarity, it can actually make it warm. Sure. So, to, to expand the, the use cases for the, the unit itself would be to also be able to heat the person's food if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Know, the Tauntaun refrigerator. Everyone. Tauntaun. Yeah. You find it on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> so you might be looking for a while. <laughs> <That's rough age>. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's cool. So uh, obviously you have a great amount of insight and, and experience with this stuff. And if you can turn a and lockbox cooler into Tom something Tom. that makes a bunch of sense. Like <laughs> I, I guarantee you there's a ton of value you can offer um, our listeners and everyone. So how do they get a hold of you? Like what's the best way to do that? What's the best way? Are you give free consultations to people that are coming at you with the uh... Yes. Yes. Okay. I will give time to anybody that has an idea. The way I look at it is if anyone listening and anyone in this room or anyone around the world has an idea mm-hmm. and they want me to potentially take their money to do it, yeah. I will listen to them for 30 minutes <laughs> sure. to an hour yeah. and make sure it makes sense for them. Yeah. I just don't, I just think there's an ethical, moral thing that has to happen there. Cool. Yeah. So, cool. yeah, so the best way to get a hold of me, um, you can reach me uh, via my, the website, which is ideahouseandco.com. I'm sure you guys can link it in. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And then um, Instagram, it's my full name, Matthew Isaac, is the easiest way to get a hold of me. Absolutely. Nice. Boom. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Well, yeah. well, thank you for yeah. coming out, man. Yeah, thank thanks you for guys. coming out. Um, yeah, everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of the Five O'Clock Hustle podcast. You can find all of our social media links on our website at five o'clock hustle dot com. Thanks again, Matt, for coming out so thank far you. away. Thank you. I know. <laughs> and I started going back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Boom.